So you're brand new to Gmail, and there are some things that look a little unfamiliar from the last mail client you've used. We're going to take a look at how you can get started with Gmail and get used to the new things that you see here. When you first log in, you'll see something like this screen, and it's not going to seem too different because you see a bunch of email messages here. Um, I have a lot of Google Plus notifications. And you can click on any of these to read the message, so I'm just going to click on this one and you can see the message here and then you can reply to it here or if you want other options there's this little triangle with the drop down message to show you all that other stuff you can do if you uh, find out that this is a spam message you can click spam if you want to delete the message you can delete it if you think this is an important message you want it highlighted this will mark it as important and that will put it in something called your priority inbox and putting it in your priority inbox uh, will tell Google that it wants to it needs to show messages like this um, at the top and highlight them for you so if there's someone you hear from a lot or there's a particular newsletter you really like to read click this and they'll show up on top of your inbox in your priority inbox um, so you're you'll be sure not to miss those messages if you go over here there's archive this is one of the main differences in gmail from other clients and archiving a message will not delete it, but it will move it out of your mailbox. So what ends up happening when it, when you have an archive is you won't see it here anymore, but you'll have the option of going to all mail, which you'll find under here, and you can see all the messages you've, ar you've archived and you have in your inbox and everything. So you're not actually missing anything. Um, if you go back to mail, you won't see those, but if you were to search for it, you'd find it, um, and you can find it under here. You'll also notice that I have um, some things that say personal travel, etc. Those are called labels. So let's say I wanted to mark these messages. I just check those and I want to mark those as personal messages. Go to labels and then I can choose personal and click apply. And then I can go ahead and archive those too. And I'll be able to find them in here and when I go to all mail. Um, and so that's an easy way of actually sorting your stuff. If you want to create more ways to sort and make new labels, you can click Labels here and choose Manage Labels. And this will take you into your Gmail settings. And it will take you to the Labels tab where you can edit those labels. And you'll see some are already created for you here, like the ones we just saw. If I wanted to create a new label, like Emails from Mom, then I can click Create and it will be right in there but I can also say it's a sub label of one of these others and it is going to be personal so I can nest it under there and you'll see personal has a little plus by it now and I can see emails from mom and now I can uh, put emails in there now before we get into more settings another way to add stuff to labels is if you just grab this little see this these dots here that's the grip on your messages and you can you'll see a hand show up and you can grab them and drag them onto stuff so I will just say this is an email from mom even though it's not and there now it's part of this label now to go back into the settings and if you want to find um, your other settings you can just go into this gear menu here and choose mail settings and now you'll see that you have a lot of different stuff here um, you have all these different kinds of stars um, you'll see starred messages is something that appears on the side and that if you click a star here that it, this becomes a starred message and it'll show up in your starred area and that's to mark messages that you want to flag for later um, and you can also you can use different kinds of stars here one star four stars or all stars um, and that way if you click one star then it will change to the next color and the next color and the next color if you're using four or all stars um, and so there are some other things you can have here. You can add a signature. Um, there are some, you can add text snippets of vacation reminder when you're gone and you want an auto reply to happen. When people email you, you can put that here. These are all your general settings. We already looked at labels. If you're coming from somewhere else, if you've just switched to Gmail and you want to import all your other mail, this is where you can do it in the second part here, import mail and contacts. You can import from Yahoo, Hotmail, AOL, or other POP3 accounts. Um, POP3 or POP3 is 
uh, pretty, pretty much a standard of email. There's POP3 and IMAP, and chances are you're coming from a POP3 account. So just uh, go ahead and click this button and follow the instructions. Uh, you'll learn more here uh, if, you're, if you're importing. Um, it'll be easier from these services already mentioned. However, if you're coming from your ISP, your internet service provider's account, you're more you're very likely to be able to import them as POP3 too. Just talk to your service provider to get the necessary information. Filters are a really handy thing. And what filters can do is automatically deal with messages that come into your inbox. Now you can go ahead and click create a filter. And you can say this message is from mom at mom.com. And if any of those messages come in, I'm going to do a test search. You can see nothing is going to show up here because I'm not getting any emails from mom at mom.com. But if I did, it would say here are all the messages that match that. And then I'd go to next step. And I would say I'd star it because it's important to me. And I'd apply the label emails from mom. And then I'd go ahead and create the filter. So that way, whenever I get any messages from mom at mom.com, they'll automatically show up in here and here, and I'll have a nice star by them in my inbox. So that's what filters can do, but it doesn't just have to be from people. It can be any, pretty much any data the email would have. You just enter it in the filter, and if it gets matched, then it will do what you tell it to do. Um, we're not going to go through every single one of these things here, um, because they're not all important, but you should know that you also have chat in Gmail, and so all your Gmail contacts will show up in chat over on this side. And you can set your status. It's a lot like Instant Messenger. In fact, you can even sign into your AOL Instant Messenger, or AIM, as it's abbreviated, account here. Um, and then uh, one more thing we'll just take a look at really quick is themes. And so if you don't like the basic Gmail layout, you can customize it to look how you like. Um, you can't just add any theme that you want, but you can make it look uh, lots of different ways. So here are a bunch of themes that are in there. And if you want, um, if you want to use the, the new Google style that's popping up all over Google services, you can try Preview or Preview Dense. That happens to be my favorite. Um, and so that's going to take its time and get set. But as soon as it's done, you will have, uh, you'll see the new Preview theme showing up on Gmail. And so that is basically how you use Gmail. It's not that much different than any other email client you've used before, but there are a few notable differences, which we went over, in that you can archive your messages, you can customize a lot of things, um, you use labels instead of folders, use stars instead of flags, um, and you have a priority inbox, so, message, so Gmail will recognize the important messages as it learns what you like and what's important to you. So it has a lot of features that will make email better, um, but it's not something that is completely foreign once you get the hang of it.